Oh, there's loads more, aren't there? Mm -hmm. There's loads more. Oh, welcome along, folks. Today, the plan is drag all the electrical cable that I've salvaged. When we moved in, there were lots of three-phase power outlets running all over the place, and we brought them. We took them down and put them upstairs. That's four, four core. So I'm going to lay them all out today and see if we haven't got enough to drag some power from the consumer unit over there to this side so we can plug obviously these elements in. I'm not sure how much we've got. I think we'll be able to pull it across to power three elements and then we can just run the pumps off the, uh, off the single phase ring main. That'll be the plan. <laughs> Special delivery. You know when the old fermentation fridge packed up? Well look what we've got. An extra long probe. So we'll fit that tonight. Hopefully we can get it working. And it also comes with a little note. Happy Brewing from Belfast. CD. I can't remember his bloody name. We'll have to have a look and put it down at the bottom. And some cracking looking beer mats or coasters check them out <laughs> cheers dude well we've laid some cable out and I've been playing around with it see which is the thickest stuff which is going to be good for carrying the load for the boil kettle and uh, I've sprung a leak so that's it I'm gonna have to go home now can't do it anymore, Jim. I can't take this pain. So, yeah, come and have a look. We've got quite a few lengths of cable on the floor. Three of them, I think, are suitable in terms of length. And then, if we come to the ends, you'll see that one of them is quite hefty. I think that's six mil square. This one looks like four or 2.5 mil square and this looks like 1.5 square i think that 1.5 would actually carry the current for the hlt but uh, what i will probably do is use this 2.5 for the hlt and then this four mil for the boil kettle i think that's going to be enough this is three core though that one is four core i prefer four core if i'm honest we can run on the neutral then if one of the phases is down but it's not essential we can still we can still work with the three cores and then using the uh, armored sheathing as as the earth path so i've been doing some calculations trying to figure out exactly what current these cables are going to be able to carry the boil kettle for instance is going to have two nine kilowatt elements in there which will give us 18 kilowatts draw and according to this calculator on the tinterwebs, if you can see it, we'll try and get this in focus for you. The uh, calculator says that I can use four millimeter square cable to carry 18 kilowatts of power, which would be 41 amps if the cable is clipped direct to a wall steel wire armoured four core which is what we've got and we've got to clip it direct to a wall uh, and there's a 20 meter run so i'm quite pleased with that actually i think we'll be able to stick this up and not have any concerns about it actually working let's go ahead and figure out where we're going to run it it would appear the pump has finally arrived from pure weld stainless or whatever they're called 
So it went exactly on a next day. But let's have a look what we've got. Well, I can immediately see that the uh, impeller is not hygienic. I can see that right away, boys and girls. Right. So, no plug provided. Right, so yeah, single face. Chintzy, chintzy looking. Housing. Right, let's uh, bring you in. Right, this is kind of worst case scenario for me, unfortunately, because I can see that the, yeah, none of this to me feels hygienic at all. Which, I, from Pure World, frankly, I'd expect something better. So, having worked with pumps very similar to this in the past, this looks to me very much like one of the Ibarra CEX pumps. Oh my gosh. Oh, we'll come back to that one. Yeah, so I see that they've welded these fittings on. The uh, RJT fitting for the top is not on square on the inside. I could have done a better job than that. I don't know what they've used on the outside, whether this is a spray paint or not. It looks like some type of spray or plating. Again, I'm not sure why they've done that. Yeah, it must be a spray paint because it's, it's inside there. Ugh, fucking hell, bent my nail back and everything. Cut myself doing that. So let's get this off. So you've got to think, you want to be able to get inside this thing after every service because it's not hygienic. Now what I would suggest is that this might be alright to be used for uh, HLT research. That's a possibility. But I doubt that this is going to be good enough. And I did ring him up on the phone and asked him if it's suitable for pumping hot work and he said we've not had any complaints yet. So, I think I might have just got a salesman on the phone because it appears that uh, the chap didn't know what he was talking about. Now I've used lots of different types of pumps, particularly the Ibarra and the Laura pumps. And I know that the impellers aren't hygienic. Right, let's have a look in here. Yeah, so here we go. Internal mating face. I can get my finger around the back of that. So what's that all about? That's not hygienic, is it? It's never going to be hygienic, that. How do you get behind there to, uh, to sanitise what's behind this plate? In fact, what is behind this plate? Why is that plate even here? What's that plate doing? Don't know. And then we've got the impeller. Tack welded all over the place. Looks like a mess. Bolt looks almost rounded off from the hot. Very thin, single. Well, I guess you get what you pay for, don't you? It's cheap and chintzy. And this really is cheap and chintzy. I don't really think I want to be doing more than a couple of brews on this before I have to upgrade. Right, I've managed to knock the nut loose on the top. Let's get in here and have a look. Right, well, it's getting from bad to worse now. So we've got a lock washer, a lock washer on there, worth nothing. And then a normal washer. God, let's hope that these are stainless steel. And then a keyed shaft. This is a keyed shaft. Retention spring. Can't seem to get the key out. And then what looks like to me 
a yeah nothing special this seal so if we can get something just to ease that out so again another piece of something there what's that doing what on earth is that baffle there doing why is that in here what's that purpose is that serving never seen that in any other other pumps So here we are, ease off the seal, looks like it's just a Viton, ah that is a ceramic, okay, so we do have a, we do have a ceramic seal on there, looks like tungsten carbide or some type of uh, silicon carbide, not sure, and then if we ease off the back plate, there we go, yeah and here that's the that's the back side of it and we can see that the it is a mechanical seal that looks like silicon carbide on there which will ride against a tungsten carbide to create the brewery seal so that is actually a thumbs up that's a good point but what I do not like is the chintzy, I mean look at the thickness of that. You know if you get hot particles and stuff in there, well you're never going to get them out. In fact there's already some muck inside it look. I don't know if you can see because the light's not great. There's already some muck and dirt inside there. How on earth are you going to get that out? And you can see the, the swirl pattern. All these little dots on here, so running from there, one, two, three, one, two, three. This is where we've got tacked on the fins on the impeller. That side, well look at the state of that. They've sent this out as a hygienic pump. Look at the state of that. It's fucking poor boys. It's fucking piss poor. I'm telling you. If you're a quality stainless steel fabrication setup and you're welding hygienic brewery tanks, you should know better than this. The preload tension spring has been grinded on one end. It's got grinding marks on there. That makes a bit of a mess of it. Again, somewhere for particles and crap to catch. I'm disgusted at the quality of that steel. And now yeah, we'll pop this stuff back on. Put some load back on the pretension spring, tighten it back up. We'll re reassemble it. You know, if I wasn't so desperate for a pump, I'd send this back. But like I said, in a couple of months time, we can downgrade this to HLT recirculation pump and it'll be fine for that because it's not going to have any schmoo or anything getting in there. But as far as hygienic pumping is concerned, this is not a candidate. Don't you forget about me. Right, power's off. I've just tie wrapped half of these cables up here because Jesus Christ, man. I cannot be bothered today to take all of these out and do them all again. And there's so much to do. This is a quiet time job, this. So, a couple of months time. Everything's up and running nice and dandy. I'll come in and revisit this now. A, I don't have the money. B, I don't have the patience. C, I don't have the time. Let's make sure that we've got the armor cable nicely anchored into this panel. And then we'll start chasing it 
up the wall when I quit. We're up. So we're ready to start chasing that across to the boil kettle and the HLT now. Yeah, what I could do with just a little bit more of a tweak. Tweak the fuck over. And then uh, we'll just coil these up, put them out of the way for now. Make sure they're not going to touch any other terminals until we come back to install and send it live. Right, I'm taking the gaskets with me. I'm going to jump in the car with Jem, hey up Chancy Pants, and we're going to shoot up, pick the kids up, and I think I'm going to sit in the back garden with a beer and pick all of those gaskets clean. In the meantime, I want to get some one inch RJT fittings to get the plate exchanger working. So that means I need to make a little order from GC Supplies, the best stainless steel company this side of the Atlantic. Maybe both, I don't know. Not been to the other side of the Atlantic. Anyway, a bit random. So I'm quickly assessing what I need to get us off the ground. It's a really pathetically small order, I know, but I think that'll allow me to get the plate heat exchanger working. I can at least pressure test it. I've got some one inch pipe. We can start to plumb it in then. Just the one inch nuts. Yeah, that's what I need just to pop on here. Nuts and liners, I may as well get 10 of each. And then we're gonna be cooking with the gas. Uh, but yeah, Gemma's gone to pick up Georgia because we're looking after her this afternoon, which is Dave and Sarah's youngest daughter. Don't ask me why, because I don't really know. Make sure I've got my wallet in my pocket and my keys. And uh, I'm gonna shoot, folks, I'm gonna shoot. More freaking distractions, got back, emailed GC Supplies. I'm sure Alexa will sort that out for me. Perfecto mundo. And then I thought I'd sit down with the NPower electricity bill for the unit, which we received today. Now, we'd, there was a discrepancy on the original bill. I don't know if you remember the video. They were trying to charge us £2,000 for like a quarter that we'd been there. So I opened up a case. It took them a whole other quarter to sort it out. They said they've cancelled the first £2,000 bill. And then they've invoiced us £2,000 for the second quarter. So I've sat down. I've taken our start read that we provided with them when we moved into the unit and I've taken the read off the meter and I've calculated how many kilowatt hours we've used and then I've multiplied that by the price that we're paying on our contract for kilowatt hours. Now, get this. They want to charge us around 4,000 pounds. I think it's 4,600, but let's say 4,000 pounds since we moved into the unit in June. I've just done the calculations. 70 pounds, 74 pounds and 40p is what we owe them. 70 pounds and 40p. Empower, sort your shit out boys and girls. That is ridiculous amount of money. That's two orders of magnitude out. Is it two orders or three orders of magnitude out? Of course, it's two orders of magnitude out. It's ridiculous. And anybody else who's just, you know, got energy for the fight, some people might just settle up and pay that. Rip-off merchants, they really are. Check your bills, check your numbers. It's a ball ache, but I think I've just saved us £4,500. Unbelievable, isn't it, how they can get away with this? Right then, folks, we've actually got a sample of the beer out the fermenter. I've had a taste and it doesn't taste three bad. And looking at that, that looks to me like it's pretty much fermented out. Let's take a quick reading, if we can get, yeah. Just put some soap suds on the top to burst the bubbles. We should be able to have a look then. So that's reading about 1014. 1012, 1014. So it's still maybe got a day or so to go. 
yeah I think that's good enough to put the dry hops into a it tastes fine so we're lucky and of course I now have the new probe from our good friend in Belfast so we'll stick this on and see what the STC does oh there we go guys new probe on she's reading 21.5 degrees and dropping because I just did touch it with my fingers so it looks like that's worked freaking perfectly thank you very much for sending that we're going to whack the dry hops in this afternoon which is only 25 gram hop drop of a tannin and then I'll probably leave this for another day or so because of the freezing issue and we'll cold crash uh, but that's it folks <laughs> look at the beautiful weather we're looking after Dave's young one for the uh, for the duration of the afternoon so I think we're going to wrap it up and uh, we'll see you tomorrow Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Oh, 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 the better